I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to be opening Logic for the first time and getting used to the interface. So we can launch Logic Pro directly from the dock here down at the bottom, and when we do that we'll have a little splash screen which will come up to show us that the program is loading. I'm going to start a new project, which I can do by coming to the File menu and selecting New, and then what I'm going to do is to have a look at this little pop-down menu which arrives here. This allows me to choose what sort of work I want to do. Do I want to work with one of Logic's software instruments? Do I want to work with an audio um, recording, either to make a new recording with a microphone or to work with Apple Loops? Do I want to do some drum programming or work with external devices, either MIDI or guitar and bass? To start with, I'm going to select a software instrument track just so we can open up a new instrument and then get used to the interface more broadly. So when I click on this first instrument here, which is Logic's RetroSynth, I'm greeted with its interface. But what we're going to do to start with is actually close that down and just have a tour of the interface more broadly. As you can see, most of the screen is dominated by what Apple call the main page within Logic Pro. This is this big area here which we're going to populate with what we call regions, bits and pieces of music, whether they're uh, MIDI uh, files or bits of audio. But around the edges of the display, we can see some other things. Let's start up here at the top. This main area here is called the transport section. It allows us to go forwards and backwards. It allows us to record, play, stop, and loop the work that we're doing. In the main section here, I can see that I've got a display showing me bars and beats and the tempo of my project. And I can very easily change this simply by clicking on uh, the current tempo and dragging up and down to select the tempo at which I want to work. I can also customize this area. If I want to see a broader range of options, I can click on this little arrow here and select either beats and time, beats only, time only, or I can also select this custom option. And this expands the display to show me time and beats and tempo and the current time signature. To the right hand side, I've got more options here as well. And one thing to note about Logic is that if you hover over an option, it will display the name of what that button does. So you can see here that I've got the replace button currently selected, and this will provide solo, and this gives me a chance to turn the metronome or click track on and off. My overall volume is over here on the right, and then further to the right, I've got a series of options which relate to the project that I'm working on. We'll see more of this a little later, but for now you can see that if I click on some of the options here, this for example is showing me project settings for audio. In here at the moment this will provide a list of all the audio files that are within my project, and at the moment I don't have any, which is why it's empty. Over on the left hand side we've got more options here too, including access to Logic's mixer, which is here, which again will expand as we add more tracks, Smart controls, which are a series of controllers for the currently selected instrument, and again we'll see those again in due course, and the edit button, which will allow me to get in um, and get involved with the type of data that I'm working on. Because this is a MIDI track, I can see what's called the piano roll editor. This is a place where I'll be able to see the notes that I record for this instrument. But if I was working with an audio track, this same editor would allow me to do audio editing. So what I've got down on the left hand side here is an audio fader which allows me to control the volume of this sound and a pan dial which allows me to move it from left to right. And there are some other features here within this individual channel strip which we'll see in due course. Up at the top left hand corner we have access to what Logic call the library. And this is a great way of us being able to begin to think about what sort of a sound we want to use for this first instrument that we've set up. When I open up the library, I have a chance to make some choices about the instrument that I want to work with. Do I want to choose a piano instrument or synthesizers or um, sounds from instruments such as electric pianos or organs? So if I want to, I can choose and select a sound from within here. So if I decided, for instance, that I wanted a synthesizer sound, I could then choose whether or not I wanted to choose a bass sound, for instance, and then I can actually pick a sound from this list. And this will automatically load this sound into the currently selected track. So we can hear this first sound that I've chosen here, which is a bass sound. And you can see that on my keyboard straight away I can play the sound that's currently selected. If I want to change that for another one, I can very easily just choose a different name here, that sound will load, and we're away. 
and you can hear some of the effects that are applied to this sound as well. Choosing sounds from the library is really interesting. Not only do we get the sound that we actually choose here as well, but some effects as well to give you your first insight into how Logic can be set up to work with effects processing as well. So we can close the library down and we've sort of completed the tour of the outside of the way that Logic works. The transport bar across the top and also our inspector down the left hand side and the library which allows us to set up sounds for the first time.